Okay, in this video, we are gonna find vector components and projections in three dimensions. And uh, before we really get into that, there are two things that you need to know going into it. So the first one is that the cosine of theta, where theta is the angle between two vectors, is uh, u dot v over magnitude of u times magnitude of v. So I'm assuming you know how to find dot products and that you know how to find magnitudes because if you're up to this point, uh, you've probably used them quite a bit. And then the other thing that we're gonna use is that um, if A and B are parallel to each other, then that means that A over the magnitude of A is equal to B over the magnitude of B or that their uh, unit vectors are the same. Uh, we're gonna use that fact kind of loosely as we do this, but uh, it's gonna be essential at one point. So uh, let's get started. So we wanna find the projection. So what is the projection? So let's say we have vector V and vector U and I'm gonna project V onto U. So to do that, kind of like drop an altitude there, and I'm creating a right triangle uh, that has vector V as its uh, hypotenuse. And then the projection is the vector that just runs along U and kind of creates that right triangle. So this right here is the projection. I'm gonna to try to color code everything as I go through this, uh, hopefully. And um, so the projection one way of thinking about it is you kind of like put a bank of lights up here, some kind of light source. It's going straight down parallel. So the lights have to be parallel to you. You're going straight down. And then uh, what you're really finding is you're kind of finding the shadow of vector V uh, from those lights. So that's how I think about it. And so it's a vector, the projection is a vector, um, but it's magnitude, sort of it's magnitude, we call the component so it's gonna be the component of V along vector U. And the component, you can think of as sort of the directed magnitude. So I'm putting directed in parentheses there. Um, it's the directed magnitude of the projection because sometimes the projection falls on you. But imagine that the uh, angle between uh, V and U is obtuse, then uh, the projection would actually fall not on you, but like on the line that contains you. And then this component would be negative. So to indicate that it's in the opposite direction of you. So we're gonna deal with that as we go through. Uh, for simplicity, I'm gonna name the projection A, and then we're gonna need the angle between vectors U and V, which is the same as the angle between vector A and V, but we don't know what A is yet, um, just so we can do this. So the problem we're trying to work on is given U and V, we're gonna find A, which is the projection of V along U. So that has its own notation, which we'll get to, but to start with, we're just gonna look at cosine of theta. So cosine of theta is based on the vectors u and v, which I'm given, it's just that first fact that we needed to know, right? So it's gonna be u dot v over uh, magnitude of u, magnitude of v. So we have that, but also because of the right triangle that we created with the projection, right? The, the vector a is kind of the base of the triangle, that dotted line is the height, and vector v sort of the hypotenuse we know that the cosine of theta is also adjacent over hypotenuse, but instead of the vectors, we use their magnitude. So it's the magnitude of A over the magnitude of V. Okay, and if you look at this, uh, the magnitude of V has shown up twice, so I can just cancel it out. Um, and that means that the magnitude of A is just whatever's left. So I'm actually gonna reverse them and say it's V dot U over the magnitude of U instead of U dot V over the magnitude of U. Um, u dot v and v dot u are equal to each other. If you found a lot of dot products, you're probably aware of that. Um, so this is the magnitude of a, but there's kind of a problem. So the problem is that the dot product u dot v might be negative, and it doesn't really make sense to call a magnitude negative, which is why when I defined the component for you, I said it was the directed magnitude. So this could possibly be positive, it could also be negative. Um, so that's why we're just gonna call it the component. So the component has its own notation. So it's a component and then it's a long U of V. So I think of U as kind of like the base, um, sort of like with logs, right? You would do the log uh, base two of four or something like that, right? So U is kind of the base that you run along. And if you look at the way this is written, we have V dot U over the magnitude of U. An easy way to think of that in your head to remember this is that it's just V, the vector that's being projected um, dot product with a unit vector um, 
of the vector it's being projected on, so of the base. So it's v dot the unit vector of u, because u is the base along which we are projecting. Um, so now we know the component. So what we want is uh, the projection. So to do that, we're going to look at our figure. And we know that a and u are parallel. So by fact number two that we needed to know, uh, the unit vector of a should equal the unit vector of u. We can rearrange this. And we get kind of this, which is good. So this is basically the projection. Um, but there's a couple of things that are going to be redefined, right? So this, the magnitude of a, we're going to actually use the component that we found, that we worked out. And then uh, this is the projection. So we're going to use the notation for that. So what we end up with is the projection along u of v. So we're projecting v onto u is equal to uh, the magnitude of a. We're going to use a component, so a component along u of v, and then times this unit vector of u. So turning u into a unit vector is kind of like an essential step. You're going to use that unit vector twice. You're going to dot product it with v to find the component, and then you're going to multiply the component or scale the unit vector by the component to get the projection. All right, so that's where everything comes from. And now I'm just going to do two examples. I'm actually going to do kind of the same problem, but like project two different ways. So we're going to find the projection of v along u for u is equal to 2, 1, 4, and v is equal to 1, negative 5, negative 3. So I'm using component form instead of ijk. I don't really like ijk form, um, but you can always uh, go back and forth between them if you want. It doesn't make a difference. So I like to start by drawing a picture. But you definitely don't need the picture. Um, but I've drawn, I always draw it the same way. Uh, so I have this, and then my projection is just going to be along u. So I always draw the picture the same way. Helps me in my mind just kind of like orient myself. So first thing we want is the component. So the component of v along u is going to be equal to, so it's the dot product of v and a unit vector of u. So I'm going to write it like this. And then I think of it as the dot product of v, the vector being projected with the unit vector of the base. Uh, but I actually calculate the dot product and divide by the magnitude because it's just easier to do that. So this is going to be equal to. So the dot product is component by component. So it's 2 times 1 plus 1 times negative 5 plus 4 times negative 3 divided by the magnitude of u is the sum of the square, uh, square root of the sum of the squares, kind of the distance formula. So we get this, uh, these are just some calculations. So we end up with negative 15 over radical 21. That's the component, which like often is all that you're asked to find. Um, but in this case, we're looking for the projection. So the projection is the vector. Component is a scalar um, and the projection is a vector. So you always, anything with vectors, you wanna keep track of like, do you get a component, uh, nope. Do you get a scalar or do you get a vector? So. Components are scalars, projections are vectors. Let's find the projection. So the projection of v along u is the component of v along u times the unit vector of u, which I think of as the base in this case. OK, so uh, this is just calculation. So we sort of already indirectly found the unit vector. We definitely found the component. That's where we did all of our work. So the unit vector is just u divided by its magnitude. We found the magnitude of u, it's uh, radical 21, that's the denominator of our component. And that'll happen all the time, so like, don't worry when you get a weird radical for your uh, component. Your projection will have the same weird radical in its denominators, um, and they will uh, kind of rationalize themselves. So here it's going to be 2 over radical 21, 1 over radical 21, 4 over radical 21. And now all that's left is to distribute. You could simplify if you want, but I'm not going to. Um, just for like clarity. So all I'm doing is distributing negative 15 across the tops, radical 21 across the bottoms, I guess numerators and denominators if you want to use the right words. Um, okay, so that is my projection. So what I'm going to do now is basically the same problem, same vectors, but I'm going to do the projection of u along v. So I'm going to treat v as the base and I'm projecting u onto it. So this is the problem. And I'm not even going to draw a picture for this one. I'm just going to do it, right? Because I know what I'm doing. So I want the component of u along v. 
So that's going to be u dot a unit vector of v. So you take the base vector, which is v, turn it into a unit vector, and dot product them. So that's going to look like u dot v over the magnitude of v. So this will give me the component. That's just calculation. So we need the dot product, component by component. And then we need the magnitude of v. So that's the square root of the sum of the squares. So square root of 1 squared plus negative 5 squared plus negative 3 squared. Make sure when you square a negative, you get a positive. Um, and then do the calculations. So the dot product doesn't change. Um, and then the magnitude will. So the components are like very similar to each other. It's just that the denominators, you switch the magnitude of which vector you're dealing with is the base. And then the projection, the calculation, uh, almost identical as well. It's, well, I mean, obviously it's the component and then times the unit vector of the base vector, which is vector V. So V over the magnitude of V. And the same thing happens here. We get that radical 35 in our component but in the unit vector, we're going to have radical 35 in the denominators as well. So we're going to be all rational when we're done. Like this, do plug in. So our unit vector, again, we know the magnitude is already radical 35 because we calculated it. So it's uh, 1 over radical 35, then negative 5 over radical 35, and negative 3 over radical 35. And now it's just arithmetic, and you could simplify. I'm, again, not going to because I think it's a little clearer when you're first learning to not simplify these things. And we get this. All right, so you definitely get a different answer when you switch which one's the base and which one's being projected, um, which I think you should expect to get. Uh, but anyway, uh, I hope you found this helpful, and good luck.